was very strict like we'd have to um have our hair braided all back so honestly like if any guy liked you you knew you were popping because you couldn't wear makeup and you had to look like you were low-key but little bow wow in in puberty going through puberty like hey guys welcome to my channel my name is crystal so if you are a new subscriber welcome 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 and if you've been rolling with me thank you thank you thank you i appreciate you so much for the support for the love for subscribing for being along this journey with me um yeah so i thought it would be a really good idea to do a story time this is my first story time ever so um if i'm like really animated just ignore me because i'm literally like a cartoon character like i have no chill when i tell stories so hopefully i can comport myself and stay one place in my seat so uh, yeah i thought this would be a really cool idea in collaboration with uh, my partnership with dear co ankara designs um if you go on my instagram you will see that i did partner with them um and i styled two of their outfits it was really really fun um i got to also partner up and link up with grace seek uh she's a photographer and it was just so awesome so the pictures are bomb y'all like they are bomb like the holy spirit said what's up and i just looked bomb <laughs> but anyways um i'm going to start off with my story about how i got shipped to nigeria and um basically went to boarding school there for four to, well went to school there for four and a half years and went to boarding school there as well um so when i say i got shipped off to nigeria um i mean it in the most actual sense like my parents were like hey we're going to nigeria for december get your bags get your stuff i'm like oh my gosh yeah you know Nigeria oh my gosh I haven't been back in a while so I'm like packing all my stuff my mom's like helping me pack all my stuff and at this age I think I'm about 14 so I'm packing all my stuff and then um, we get on the plane with all my brothers I have four older brothers we get on the plane we're all going to Nigeria and we get there right we just chilling just chilling just chilling <laughs> we're chilling right and um, we're at my dad's friend's house and my dad was just like you know you're gonna love it here I'm sorry it was in that moment that I realized that homegirl wasn't going back I realized that homegirl is not leaving <laughs> that country <laughs> like it dawned on me I thought he was kidding so I kind of laughed like ha, 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 like where love it where love it where so I'm like sitting here like thinking to myself like maybe he's kidding around maybe the air is contaminated maybe we should leave now so um i go home i'm like hey mom you know dad said that he, i am going to be staying in nigeria you know like what is he talking about and mom was like yeah you and your brother are staying here so i mean the first thing that i thought of was just like wow wow the betrayal you know we all hear about the bad kids that get sent to nigeria because they're just so bad that the american laws cannot even hold them down and they need to get taken to nigeria to get beat and be made into a whole new person like i was not that bad of a child i feel like i was just you know i was i was um i was difficult you know i'd say i was difficult but i wasn't that bad and i know people like to say oh crystal you were sent to nigeria because you were bad and i disagree I have to agree or disagree. I wasn't, I was bad, but I wasn't like that bad. I mean, <laughs> depends on your definition of bad. But anyways, um, so I'm in Nigeria now. I'm trapped. Ain't no ticket to go back. It was two of us that stayed back. So the three other of my brothers were getting their stuff together to go back. They're packing their bags. Oh, we're going to miss you guys. And I think it's a joke. Like, y'all are kidding, right? You know, so they, they leave. Like, and mom's like, oh, you know, you have to take an entrance exam for your school. So I'm just like wait like this is a whole dream but anyways at this point i'm kind of like okay i wouldn't mind nigeria oh different environment my dad is here my mom is here parents are here everything is good so i wasn't really like angry i was just more so like oh okay i mean i guess you know america was cool but like i was bullied so i felt like bullied in america stay in nigeria and be loved because you're american go back to america and be basic because everyone's american 
I'm gonna stay in Nigeria. So I didn't mind staying in Nigeria and I love different cultures. I love culture period. So um, I stayed, you know, and then after that, like there are more surprises. Like the surprises do not end at just me staying in Nigeria. Next thing you know it, mom is buying wholesale type thing. And I'm sitting here like, what is she doing? What's going on? Lo and behold, y'all, that I'm going to boarding school. Like boarding school. I said, wow. You people just want to kill me. You just want to send me away into the into the bushes, right? Into a far, far away town. I said, wow. This is how I will, I will just disappear. <laughs> I mean, you guys don't love me. So anyways, my parents were packing up to get my stuff together. They checked me into my boarding school, got my room and everything. And then she's like, well, I'm leaving. And I literally turned around, faced the TV, and just busted out crying. Like, can you all imagine being 14 years old? You know, you're born and raised in America. You're living your life. You're, you know, you're adapted to the American culture. Your parents fling you into a whole different country. And now you're here trying to understand where do you go from here? And then you're trapped in a boarding school with like 30 different girls you don't even know. You've never met them. And I was just like, dude, dude, take me to the king. I don't have much to bring like my heart is torn to pieces like I felt so betrayed I felt so betrayed and um, yeah I just I had to suck it up I had to suck it up so after that I get to boarding school I pack into my room I do all this stuff and then I realize there's this like senior junior battle going on the senior junior war so of course I'm a junior like I'm I'm fresh I'm a junior I'm in JSS two at that time and um basically that's eighth grade so i'm in eighth grade at that time and um my roommate is a senior like she's an ss2 and she tells me you know that i'm going to have to polish her shoe in the morning the next day so i'm just kind of like looking for the correlation between x and x and y and z like why me so there's this unspoken war between seniors and juniors that I never even knew about that I'm now involved in and I guess it's more so like a signal or a symbol of respect you know the juniors do stuff for the seniors they've been through this before when I became a senior I became the you know hey junior go do this hey junior scrub my shoes hey junior uh, wash my clothes and we had to hand wash clothes there ain't no washing machine ain't no dryer so pretty much a rundown of how the boarding school was it was I mean it eventually became normal or whatever but there's no technology you know um, if you want to watch TV we watch TV on Saturdays only leisure day only that's it um, there's no technology there's no phones or no there's no laptops there's no there are no computers nothing for you to contact the outside world if that's not prison please ask me again what it is I'll wait <laughs> but anyways um, we have bells, you know, we had bells to wake up, we had bells to go to sleep, we had bells to make our bed, we had bells to pray, we had bells to eat, we had bells for everything. Our lives were literally on a schedule, like to the T, like pretty much I was in the military, like, I mean, I don't know, I can't really compare it to the military because I've never been to the military, but it, it was a very structured, um, um, you know, coordination, so it was cool, you know, at first I was just like, this is horrible, but then of course the older you grow, the more you adjust, and then the more you get used to it, I made friends, um, you know, it was just one of those things where you just, you just had to bond with people, like literally like survival of the fittest, like find your crew, find your, your friends and stick with them, um, you know. I don't know like it was just one of those things you know like I mean imagine being in a, a house of 30 or 15 or you know whatever how many women and each room literally had like at least either five to ten people in it give or take like five to ten or maybe the most was like 13 at that time we had like bunk beds and stuff or we have individual beds and it was just like it was interesting it was pretty cool um, one experience that I remember was being slapped like I got slapped like, psh, like all across my face like that whole hand was like like it was it was bad it was pretty bad um, so basically uh, every morning we have to make our beds like you have to make your bed and they do like a little bed check they go around to your beds and they take your beds to see if they're made right so of course for me like uh, I mean, I try, but like I'm not used to this, so whatever. So I'm like um, making my bed how I feel like I make it, you know. And the we have an invigilator that comes around, someone that inspects our beds. So she comes around and she's just like, "Your bed is not made properly." And I'm like, "Dude, 
like what do you want me to do like i don't know what you want me to do so i was just i didn't say that out loud god forbid but i was just like <laughs> it was at that moment that she was like what slap i cried i called my parents i begged them to come pick me up and they were like no you know it's about obedience i'm just like bro like this is a joke this is a whole joke like please someone called ashton like i have to be on punk i have to be on punk there's no way this is my life you know so of course you know you don't have your phones you don't have anything so i like borrow a phone um from a friend or from the hostel manager whoever is you know on site to ask if they i could call my parents and they let me so um yeah nothing happened to the teacher um my parents did not care because they're like well you should have made your bed and i'm just like Whoa. Anyways, um it was really cute because like the boys hostel and the girls hostel were not connected um and the boarding school was about 10 to fit i want to say 10 minutes away 10 to 15 minutes away from the school school um and a little farther from the boys boarding school um it was like the cutest thing because like the boys that had crushes on the girls would send little love letters through the cooks because the cooks would cook it at our our hostel and then travel to the boys hostel and drop off their food so the cool cooks shout out to you shout out to y'all shout out to the cool cooks <laughs> um would take the messages take the chocolates take whatever like whatever it is and they would like give it to the girl but one day someone got caught and that person was not me because god forbid we were having studying time and um the hostel manager was in there and the cook came in and she had the the letter like it was revealing too much like it was like it was like you know like this like you could see the white paper and um my host manager was like what is that what is that give it to me so she took it and she said oh he's for you she, not for me but you know for the girl and she just read it out loud i was like dang i told all my all my babes do not write me letters because we don't have phones so it's like that's literally all you have like you know just i don't know like it's literally all you have and um i remember that I, I remember when i started dating or i got my first boyfriend i would like beg my best friend to bring her phone to school um so that i could call him like in the bathroom like please bring your phone to school i can call him with your minutes um because in nigeria we have minutes literally like we have like cards that we scratch off like MTN cards, glow cards, and we would have to use those um, to, you know, re recharge our phones, um, the balance of our phones whenever it runs out. Because once it runs out, baby, <laughs> let me tell you, you're in trouble because you can't call anyone unless you reload. So it was just really, really funny. Um, fights i know i got into one fight um it was actually very very sad um it was actually one of my really good friends and um yeah it was just over the most pettiest of things like i think that i i already have this hidden anger in my heart towards her because um she started dating the guy that i had dated you know like it was like back to back and like she didn't tell me i just felt really betrayed like, um just... unfortunately we got caught of course and um yeah we got caught and i was publicly flogged uh publicly flogged if you don't know what that means it basically just means that you're like you know they get a cane and they flog you on the hand to make a public apology to the whole school because i was the head girl um that was pretty huge you know um i think just overall nigeria was very 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 interesting you know like men were always chasing women there like hey baby fine girl sexy lady it's it's very aggressive very aggressive to say the least so yeah um i learned a lot about the education system i learned a lot about uh, my values there my morals there um basically also just finding my voice i think that going to nigeria i was very shy very timid but once i got there um they kind of pushed me to the edge kind of pushed me to pass my limit and um brought out this person in me that i never knew was there which was a very outspoken a very um opinionated a a very vocal person and I really appreciate that because honestly like I was very timid I was very quiet I didn't want to get noticed but in Nigeria I was like oh yeah put me in the front you know let me speak yeah it was fun I plan to go back my best friend still lives there so I miss her a lot and we still communicate we still keep in touch so I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe watch my other videos why not you're already here um, I will see you guys in my next video. If you enjoyed the story time and want more, let me know what you want to hear about. Or let me know 
I don't know. Ask me questions. I don't know. Love you guys and see you in my next video. Bye.